I never look forward to sleep. That's why I don't sleep, because I dream with my eyes open. I want to become the things that I see. And if you ain't taking advantage of all of your resources and relationships and you sitting on your ass being a lazy bum, complaining about everything but still ain't doing shit, listen, watch me go get it. Let me tell you supposed to know. Mm. You're not supposed to know. Life is a mystery. If you take away the mystery and everything was certain, you would need faith. Like, I stand on this stage before you, and to be honest, I never thought I would be doing this. They put me in public speaking in college. I dropped the class on the second day. I despised it. As I was walking out, I never forget, I told my buddy, I said, I'd never be needing that. Faith functions best when you don't know. Mm. So God often puts us in positions where we don't know to destabilize us from think, relying too much on what we know. Yeah. Like a trainer who starts you out and he starts you out on a weight machine, okay? And then he puts you on a bench and he gives you free weights because now it's less stable. The, the less stable it is, the more muscles you build. Finally, he puts you on a ball where everything's unstable. And when he puts you on the ball, he's building up your core. So the more unstable your life becomes, the more you have to go inside yourself to stabilize yourself. You're strong enough to withstand instability. Yeah. And if you knew everything, you'd have no room for faith, for discovery, mm. for innovation, because creativity comes in uncertainty. <laughs> it comes in uncertainty, in the middle of chaos, because after a while, anytime you know too much, you stop living your best self. And the beauty of life is when God takes a situation or a circumstance and he puts you on a path that you never imagined, and your life begins to flourish and serve as a blessing to a lot of people. But more times than not, you hit extreme chaos or extreme opposition on the way to get into that point. Right? Like you think about the 9-11 incident. I travel a lot. Senseless act. A lot of people lost their lives. Right? And I remember reading an article, and in this article it spoke about the other side of the situation. And it talked about that morning, it was a wife and a husband, and they had a daughter, right? And the wife went to the husband, and she said, can you please take our daughter to kindergarten this morning? And the husband said, I really got some meetings I need to be at in that building. And the wife said, can you please do it? He said, I really got some meetings I need to be at. And the wife asked him one more time, can you please? He said, all right, I'll do it. The guy ends up taking a whole day off, ends up sparing his life. One gentleman on the New Jersey Turnpike, accident happens. He's frustrated, he's mad, he can't get to work. Accident ended up spearing his life. One gentleman got a new pair of shoes that day. He's walking, he gets a blister on his foot, he's going back home to change his shoes. He get there, end up spearing his life. One guy went to a donut and coffee shop, went to get some donuts and coffee. As he's coming out of the shop, somebody spilled some coffee on his shirt, went home to change his shirt, ended up spearing his life. The other side. Right when the opposition happens and you step back in the perspective that you have about it, that's why I love Romans 8.28 when it says, and we know, it starts the verse off with a heavy level of conviction. It says, and we know that all things work to the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his will and his purpose. And losers lose. And there are those of you out here you lose it, and you don't deserve to lose it. You put in the work. You worked hard, and you lose it. I need you to do me a favor. This is the year to turn that around. The people that are running after their dream know they're going to have hard times. They keep on running because they're saying within themselves, I'm the one. I'm the one. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. The people that are running after their dreams are the people that are hungry. Listen to me very closely. Some of you are broke. Listen to me, you flat out broke. Right? You ain't got gas money. And we're not just talking about money. You broke in your relationship. You broke in your health. And you're not broke because you have to be. Right? And I'm telling you, your whole life is going to change. If you 
would, if you would get off the couch, stop playing video games. Whatever folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information. You've got to learn how to become resourceful. You've got to learn how to become creative. Like, for real, you broke and you broke. You broke. Stop complaining. Stop going to a job you don't like. You are broke. When you going to a job you don't like, you've been there 15, 20 years. I ain't tripping on the job. I'm not even saying you should quit the job. But I'm saying that after you get off work, just like you invest in them, you need to invest in yourself. And the problem is simple. You're not investing in your idea. That you're always looking for a way to get off. Always looking for a way that you can break through. Always looking for a way that you can strike a telling blow. And you're broke because you're not getting the eye. You're not understanding the eye. I told you last week. It is about an invention and idea. And I've got to separate what I do from who I am. Listen to me, you ain't got, you get, you get phone getting cut off, on and off. Listen to me, you are broke. You've got to make it your personal business to make it happen. And you've got to resolve within yourself that I can do this, that it's hard. But you've got to say, I'm the one. I'm the one to make this happen. I'm the one to become successful in this business. As you work to help other people become successful, that needs your success.